Alright guys, we got to a stage now we can start designing the connection details between the structural members. At this point of time we have two types I would say of connection details. The standard connection which is already embedded into Revit. So if I need to create for example a connection between the column and the rafter, there is a standard connection I can use already um, in Revit. But to create a connection at this point, for example, between the struts and the two bracing and the rafter, there is a bracing connection uh, already in Revit. Having said that, wouldn't suit uh, exactly the size of these members. So if our members were, were a bit larger, for example, a larger tubes or uh, larger angles, we may be able to use that connection but because we are using rods that's not going to be a standard connection already in Revit so we have to create that connection all together as a group then we can save it for other members so let's start with let's start with the standard connections for example create the connection between the two main members the columns and the rafters so our connection here is specified to be a between the column 20 millimeter base plate that's for the column that's the rafter column connection details we're using 20 millimeter thick plate with 8 m24 8.8 slash s sports okay so let's check what does that means first to start with 8.8 slash s sports uh, when we say when we read this annotation 8 off 8 times m24 simply m refers to the metric system we're not using any imperial bolt what we use here are metric bolts so i m24 24 the diameter of the bolt 8.8 .8 is the grade of the bolt or the mainly refers to the tensile strength of these bolts if we go to the file of added to your student drive under support documents design support documents under design support documents you've got asi bolts and welding so if you open that file please and you scroll down so we've got the first part talking about bolting or the type of bolts bolt types so first of all talks about the sizes of these bolts and where they're used and mainly we need to talk about categories of these bolts so we have two main to start with in terms of strength we have two main categories for these bolts we have the 4.6 and 8.8 .8. These are the two main categories for the bolts in terms of strength. Now, in terms of the joint or the connection, we have further classification for those. So let's look at this table here. This will summarize everything. Based on the strength, the minimum bolt in size strength, we have two different strengths. So we've got the 400 MBA and the 830 MBA. That's why we refer to those as category 4.6 or 8.8 .8, uh, type of bolts so that's where this number came from from the minimum port size strength or the strength of the bolts okay now in terms of connection we have a few different classification dies we have the snug type of connection and we have the full tensioning type of bolts snug it means that two things are snug together like just uh, close as possible to each other okay as uh, as much as possible to each other in other words for in terms of bolts for a port to be considered bolt connection to be considered as a snug connection that means it's just being tightened by hand wrench so I just by hand device as based on the um, like physical strength of the operator of the guy tightening these bolts these type of bolts will, will consider as snug tight bolts whereas if we use special tools for tensioning these bolts has a specified torque torque that means strength and rotation has specified torque then we can create what we call it full tension connection full tension connection these bolts under a certain amount of strength uh, for tightening this bolt and that will create tension in the bolts okay so it depends now on the type of the joint we can call it either friction joint or bearing joint so that's a different thing it depends on the type of the joint is it friction or a bearing joint so just to give you an idea on the full tensioning bolts for the 
first. Rats. Okay. At this point of time, we can consider these bolts are snug tight. That's it. So they tighten them. Look at them. They were just hand tightened before. These bolts were just using the fingers tightened, just located in place. And then using this tool that will allow the operator to tighten them just to be snug tight. That's the first stage. So if we have a snug tight connection, that's it. We achieved our connection. But for a, a tensioning pull, they go on a further uh, stage. Do you see the board is just still loose here as he's inserting the tool? Um, that means it's just hand tightened and the operator is just doing a connection. That's how we achieve the stunt. Then they go. That's the. Look at the tightening now, it's very short. That's just the second round of tightening which is in theory sometimes depends on the type of connection usually talks about rotating this nut further by third turn that will create what they call it the tensioning that will take us to the second category which is the tensioning tie ports the T tie ports as you can see there is a measure here to be applied that's it and that, guys, just simply shows you the difference between these two ports. So what we've got here, just to go back to our design, we usually use snug type ports as standard because they don't need any special tools on site and they do the job for this connection. If we need the tensioning type ports for some reason, then that will be specified by the design engineer. At this point here, we've got the snug type port specified. So we'll just Keep that in mind so let's read through the our connection 25 millimeter thick plate with eight of m24 bolts 8.8 .8 gregory that means the high strength port or structural port what we call them so if you, if you go back here we call those high strength structural ports okay anything at 4 4.6 we call it commercial ports and snug tight bolts uh the hunch we're providing there uh, the same size as the rafter and the uh, try, uh, provide 10 millimeter stiffener blades to the column whip at connection locations of rafter, haunch, maximum tension, compression flanges. Okay, so it's asking us to provide the stiffener blades, 10 millimeter stiffener blades. We are asked to provide a haunch for this connection. Okay, so if I just choose these two members, I need to provide the connection. I can go to connection here. Let's save. If I go to connection D problem, we don't have any connection details in here. So let's just add those in first. So we'll go to press on this arrow here, just pointing down to the corner. And that will open the library of the connections so I can add them to my project. Okay. So I'll select them all, add them to my project, press OK. So I've added those to our project. Now I can just look into these two members and say go to structure or steel structure this is the connection here or steel that's the connection there other so i just go to connection and as you can see that created the symbol of connection between the two members it shows here that the uh, this is the main member this is the secondary member if i need to just swap this around for any reason i can just click on that so we have these are the connection what we need to do is specify the type of connection as we agreed would be a haunch connection and knee frame with haunch connection so this is the one that we will need to use give it a minute to update that slowed down just give it a minute to update that's it okay so we've got our connection shown here but that's not the specification we are we're after what we need to do we need to modify our parameters to be honest for some reason on the 2020 this function here is not operating properly so we're going to do it in a different way which is not the great way to be done but that will get us through this until autodesk will fix this issue 
So what we can do, just let's edit the type. We'll go to edit property, type property from here, or you can just take it from here, edit type. First of all, let's duplicate this so we don't change the uh, property. I'll just call it at, I'll always keep at, that will keep the name at the top. When I look through the list of connection, that will keep it at the top so I can see it. And I'll know this is my connection here at new frame bolted. So I'll just use this name and then I can go to edit this connection. Usually this menu here will be open just if I click modify parameters without going any further. But for some reason this is not working currently on the 2020 version. We'll wait for it to be fixed. Let's keep an eye on this connection here. It's next to us so we can modify it. So the uh, haunch is, let's choose our haunch to be 1500 millimeter long and the same profile as the rafter. That's what the specification is. If we, if we change this number here, if we make it larger, that will make this haunch with a gap here. That's not what we want it. So we'll keep it the same, which is the same depth as our rafter, 530 or 525. And the chamfer is 19 millimeters on both sides or 20 millimeters shouldn't be a problem. Those are not really critical to us. Okay, so this is for the haunch. We got everything we want, additional plate. We're not needing any additional plate. Uh, additional rafter, yes, we'll add additional rafter just so we can support the last purlin here for the roof above the girts. So let's use a proper section, an Australian section. So let's go to all Australian universal beams yeah let's just use a universal beam for that the smallest universal beam uh, 150 ub 40 that will do the job and slope that's fine the length of that we don't need more than 200 because just we need something to sit within the thickness of the girts which is about 200 millimeters okay distance from the top it's exactly the same as the top we'll keep it in line with the rafter and not horizontal slope we want it okay now the end plate, we agree this end plate, I think was to be 30, 25 millimeter thick plate. So that is 25 millimeter thick. Uh, the gap will allow for tolerance, just so it will make it easier for installation, we'll make it five millimeter tolerance. Now the specification of this plate, I'll choose the projection method. That means I can just specify the distance this plate will project vertically from the top and bottom or horizontally from the two sides and that would give us the size of the plate that's an easier way for what we need it to or i can just select the actual value exact values so let's just choose the uh, projection and i need this plate to project up by a certain distance to allow for m24 millimeter port to be connected there at the top if you remember so that M24 millimeter bolt, if I go back to our uh, bolting specification, the 24 millimeter bolt should have a minimum distance of 42 millimeters, or I can just assume 45, an easier round number. So I know that my bolt here at this point, if we sit here, I'll need 45 millimeter above that bolt to start with. And then I need another distance here just below that bolt to allow for that bolt to be tightened like clearance. So if they use the tools around it, they can reach that bolt. So I'm going to provide 105 millimeter there. And projection from the bottom, I'll keep it the same 105. So I'll get the same on both sides, top and bottom. And that's it for the end plate. If we go to the cap plate, we say yes, we'll need a cap plate. Just 12 millimeter will do for a cap plate. And all the sizes doesn't matter. Now the most important thing, I need to make sure my column will extend the same distance as my plate. So my plate extended 105. Now I need my column to extend 105 plus the thickness of the plate to make the plate sits at the top. That will make it 117 to allow the thickness of the plate. If you look at it. Wait for it to update, you see, just so I can make sure the column will sit in line with this plate. Now, if we go to the bolts, we will choose the M24 bolt. First of all, I'll choose the Australian standard bolt, so I'll go to high standard bolts. 
AS1252, that's the 8.8 .8 grade. Okay, so we can choose 8.8 .8 snug port, not with washer, and I'll choose the 24 millimeter ports. Okay, so this is the Australian standard. We have two of them. We have AS1111, that's for the commercial grade bolts. Look, if I choose it, that was changed to 4.6, or the high strength structural ports, 8.8 .8 grade. We want that to be 8.8 .8 snug tight bolts. A nut with a washer assembly, that's fine. Now, all of those will stay as is. I'm just going to check from this side here. Close. That's all good. So the port is at a good distance from the edge. If we had an issue about that, we can change this distance here by changing these bolts now inserted on the gauge line of this column. If I had to change that, we could have changed it from here. Just say, for example, I want them to be 60 millimeter away from each other. They will come closer to each other. But let's keep them on the gauge line for now, and that's doing the job for us, which is about 140, I think. So look, this is not very important at this point here. The important part for us is this specification here. Let's look at it from this side. Zoom in. So we want our port, the first thing, our M24 bolts, we want it to start at a distance of 42 millimeter or 45, we assume from this point here. So we want our edge distance to start with is 45 millimeters. Okay, that gave us enough distance here. That's great, that's what we're after. Enough for the socket to tighten the bolt, enough for the tools they need to use around this bolt to be tightened. That's great. Now for the second bolt, we'll use roughly the same distance here, so I'll, I'll just try maybe 120. It looks to me very close at this point here. So let's just use a bit more, 150. That looks okay. I think 140 will look better. Just roughly, I'm, I'm trying just to make sure that I've got the same distance here. Now, the other important measurement is I need to have this port here at the end at 45 millimeter edge distance. So to be able to do that, I have to save here, go OK, and go to the actual drawing and measure it. So if I look at the west elevation, this is the connection that we're creating. I can't see the connection because my level of details is in medium. So if I change it to fine, I can see it. This is the ports we're just adding. So if I measure so you can see what we've done. If I measure from the center line of this port here to the edge of this plate, that's 45 millimeter what we specified. And these two bolts, we agreed they're sitting away from each other 140 millimeter. Now, my job is to make sure this bolt here will sit from here at 45 millimeter again, okay? So if I measure the distance from here, To there that's 1081 take 45 that's where I want my board to sit take 140 so I'm just going to the calculator 1081 take 45 take 140 that should give me the number 896 so let's try that Go back here, I'll delete this number here, 896, okay. So let's go back to our detail, go edit, go to bolt groups. So if I choose 896 and then 140, let's have a look at it. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay, two bolts at the top, two bolts at the bottom, just to make sure we've got these right specification. I hope guys you, you worked it out. How did I come up with that number? Simply I just measured that I can measure the distance from here to the end of the plate. I know that this bolt here will be sitting at 45 millimeter from that edge, and then I know this bolt here will be sitting at 140 from this bolt. So I took that measurement, 1081, take 45, take 140, that gave me the location of this bolt here. So I'll put it here, which is the 
uh, distance from this bolt to the one before it. And then I offset it the second bolt after the 140, and that should give us 45 millimeter from the edge. Weld will keep it as a standard weld. We don't have any special requirements for the weld, and we'll talk about it at a later point where we start talking about annotations. And for the additional weld, we'll keep it all exactly the same. Reinforcing uh, plates. Reinforcing plates, usually we use it when we have two plates connected together. One is way thicker than the other. So if I just go to OK, if I look at this connection here, try to measure the thickness of the flange. So the column flange is 13 millimeter. We used a 25 millimeter for this plate. Let me explain. Go back to my connection. So we'll go to bolts reinforcing. Okay, so let's look at our connection here. See guys, we are connecting a thick plate to a thin plate. There's no point of using thick plate here if this plate here is very thin, which is the flange of the column. Okay, this is the column and this is the two flanges for. Because if this plate is thick, it's strong, can resist lots of shear forces for the bolt not to punch through it and a moment transfer. But if this plate here is very thin, that means the bolt can simply just shear through this bolt and punch through it. So what we can do to stop this, we can provide reinforcing plates on the thin plate and we can just provide for the two groups of bolts. Let's use a how much the thickness? It's the difference between the two plates. So we've got one plate is 30 uh, 25 millimeter the other one is 13 the difference is 12 millimeter which is a standard plate that's good so the thickness is 12 millimeter thick plate and the size of that plate this could be calculated but just because we're using m24 bolts let's use about 60 millimeter square bolts okay so that's the 60 millimeter and that's still in my opinion not very uh, large so let's make it maybe 80 millimeter bolts okay what we can choose to do if we want to you can merge the two board the two plates per group and that's that could be easier and more efficient so looking looking at it in 3d I'll just merge these two plates together into one plate and these two plates into one plate just to provide that extra thickness here so the boards they don't punch through this thin plate here Holes and holes asking if you if you going to make a slotted holes larger holes for adjustment we don't need that for now because the specification of holes usually they are at least at this bolt here three millimeter about three millimeter larger than the bolt diameter stiffener plates will provide stiffeners at all locations so we have full full and for that's what we've been asked for to provide stiffeners at so you see this reinforcing plate is in the Y now and I think the same thing goes to that so we have to we have to separate these plates we can't keep them continuous and these uh, 10 millimeter thick plates so I'll just go back to this reinforcing and separate them without merging them together and stiffener plates we've got all the stiffeners added here the specification we've got that we need stiffener at the fringes of the rafter and the haunch where the maximum tension and compression so we have these three different plates and that's it that's all just some other type of stiffeners that's not all we want it so that's the main stiffeners that we are after and that will conclude our connection okay so if I look at it in 3d this is our connection so you may think guys it's a maybe time consuming it's not really I was just talking and trying to explain it and when you get to a stage that you are doing it um, on regular paces you'll be able to finish this connection very quickly and the good thing even about it that the minute you create one connection I can reflect this connection for all similar 
scenarios. If I go just to the West Elevation, this is our connection here, I can just right click on it and choose Propagate Connection. That means I'm asking Revit, look at all the items, structural items that we have in the drawing. If you have similar arrangement to what I've got here, repeat the same connection just by clicking on it and give it some time. It says the highlight geometry no longer determined by a plane, that's fine. Press OK and give it some time just to get. So as you can see, this has been created between all similar locations. If you give it some time, just change the level of detail from coarse, from fine to coarse, and then maybe to fine again. That will show the connection. Okay. So as you can see, it doesn't take really long time just to create all these connections at once. All what you have to do is just spend some time to specify the properties of the first connection that you need to create.